I thought this could be a fascinating video. Uh, so first, I have to explain what exactly we will be going over uh, in this video. The Jaguars essentially played in three playoff games. Only you know, technically two, but they also played in what was, you know, had basically the exact same stakes as a playoff game, uh, the final week of the season against the Titans, winner would go to the playoffs, loser would not, so, uh, essentially three do or die games, we will call it, the, uh, you know, we saw three games of Trevor Lawrence and three very different performances out of Trevor Lawrence in each of those games, so I kind of wanted to talk about how he played in those three playoff quote-unquote games, Let's get into it, starting off with his worst game that he played, which was against the Tennessee Titans. He was actively bad in this game. I think people forget the defense kind of bailed out the offense there in that football game, and if they didn't do that, this entire run that we're talking about with the Jaguars was completely gone. It's a very interesting sliding doors moment a little bit of, had it not worked out, the Jaguars would have finished below 500 missed the playoffs, and we would have been talking about them as, uh, you know, okay, maybe they're still, you know, a team ready for next year, but maybe we're not quite talking about them in the same light we are now had they not gone on a, you know, pretty decent playoff run. Some of the poor plays from Lawrence, really, just, he missed some throws. It was just kind of a weird, uncharacteristic game, I would say. I, I, w I wouldn't be too concerned by it necessarily, but there were some missed throws in this one, a couple that really were notable. This one definitely uh, worth talking about as it's going to be Zay Flowers running a deeper route. It's going to get towards the back corner of the end zone, right? When this play begins, you know, one of the things that Peterson loves to do, Doug Peterson loves to do, is he likes to have a lot of crossing routes, which can confuse defense, uh, defense. you know, it can confuse you as who do you pick up? If you want to switch, you got to make sure everyone's switching the right way. On this play, uh, not everyone is switching the right way. Also, a uh, slight correction, uh, Zay Jones, not Zay Flowers. I got my Zays confused. Zay Flowers, the rookie corner for, a uh, rookie receiver for the uh, Ravens, uh, who's about to play. Uh, Zay Jones, of course, the guy who was getting open uh, in the back of the end zone. No one's picking him up. But as you see, Trevor Lawrence here, he's just going to miss this throw. I mean, it's a missed throw. It's a little bit tougher than maybe it looks on paper because there was a little bit of pressure. He threw off his back foot. I think that's what maybe caused it to happen a little bit if I'm making excuses for him. But still, it wasn't enough pressure for you to miss that throw. You would have liked to see him hit that one. This next play was another one where it's going to be a, it's man coverage with a single safety deep. And you have a route that uh, it's Christian Kirk running a deeper route that definitely could get open in this situation. Watch how when this play begins, you're going to see Lawrence takes the snap. He looks over uh, towards that side of the field. And again, there's two things worth noting on this play, I think, right now. One, it is about to get open. I mean, this is a good situation that appears to be happening right here. The other is that Trevor Lawrence is about to get clobbered. So he definitely cannot you know, throw off, uh, throw the exact way he wants to throw the ball. Now, again, if you're a quarterback in the NFL, sometimes you have to make throws while getting hit, especially in uh, playoff-type games. Here, Lawrence throws one up, and he just underthrows it a bit. It uh, falls incomplete. So that happened, and that became an, uh, a bit of a narrative, and it was a you know going to be a huge narrative before a fumble touchdown gave the Jaguars the lead and allowed them to hold on and win the game. But if Dobbs doesn't fumble that football, it's probably a bigger narrative, although maybe a tad bit overblown. But it was nothing compared to what we would see early on on in the actual first playoff game against the Chargers. Obviously, when you throw 73 interceptions in a football game, people are going to take note, and that's what happened uh, with Lawrence uh, against the Chargers. But I really did have to say, I I thought that well, he made a couple of mistakes, but there was some tough turnover luck in this one. Like this play, for example. I mean, watch how Lawrence takes the snap. He's going to, you know, uh, fire one. It gets batted up and then intercepted by a defensive lineman. I don't know what you do about that. That's that's just a, sort of a tough break, I would say. I wouldn't look at that and say, oh, Lawrence was choking. And there was a couple like that. Like, there was one that should have been a penalty that was called back. Another one where it looked like a receiver ran a wrong route. So, like... Yeah, there was a lot of turnovers, sure, and some of them still were his fault, but I thought that it was a bit overblown, and again, was going to be a huge narrative of now he's played in two big games and uh, kind of struggled in both of them, but then things massively turned around. I thought that he was great in the second half against the Chargers uh, to help pull off the comeback. 
like it was just a lot of stuff like this play where uh, what happens, uh, what's going to happen on this play, the way it's designed to work is it's a man coverage play, it appears, although there is a bit of a, uh, you know, if it is someone blew their coverage, that's unrelated to the play. But anyway, I believe this is supposed to be a cover one man blitz is what's going to happen. And so Lawrence is going to look to the guy he looked to most of the year when he needed a catch, which was Christian Kirk, the you know highest paid uh, player ever, the way some people talk about him, but definitely, you know, had a very good year, right? When his play begins, Lawrence looks up he sees that Christian Kirk has just made his break and is now getting a little bit open and for Lawrence you know uh right when he sees that Kirk is going to get open he's going to make the throw watch Lawrence makes this throw and again maybe he hesitated a little bit in terms of you know waited a little bit longer than he could have he didn't really throw with anticipation he kind of waited until Kirk showed he was going to get open and then made the throw but you know what Lawrence has the arm strength to do that he has the arm strength to get it there in a hurry he doesn't have to wait as long or he doesn't have to throw it as quickly as some other players do because he has the arm strength so uh, I don't see that as a negative whatsoever and this is a lot of what we saw in that playoff game was him just making the right uh you know, the right plays of uh, him just hitting the hitting the layups and even hitting the, you know, the open three pointers or even, the, you know, somewhat contested three pointers. He just hit the shots he was supposed to hit, made the throws he was supposed to make, which is a big way they were able to complete that comeback. In the Kansas City Chiefs game, there was it was a bit of a mixed bag, but I would say it was also a very good game. I do think that once that once the turnover things kind of dried up in that Chargers game, I thought that he really had a good game and a half after that. So it's kind of interesting how his uh, you know big games kind of went in that way, or it seemed like he you know there's almost a uh, even split of not very good play and then good play. It wasn't perfect, but I'm going to show a good play from the Kansas City Chiefs game. This is going to be a situation where to have Kirk lined up in the backfield to get a linebacker covering him, which Hey, just lesson for all the defensive coordinators out there. If Christian Kirk is in the backfield, don't put a linebacker on him. Still put a corner on him. I know it's weird. I know it's unusual. I don't care. Uh, don't let yourself have a linebacker on Kirk. However, right when this play begins, it's not honestly horrible coverage. I mean, linebacker's doing what he can to try and make something happen. I give him credit for, you know, uh, trying to find a way to make something happen here. And also, uh, just to be clear, uh, I'm, I'm actually wrong. It's not a linebacker. It's an edge rusher uh, who was sort of uh, in a linebacker type situation here. He was in coverage. He's the one. George Karloftis is covering uh, Christian Kirk here. Not a great idea. Don't recommend that. But still, Karloftis doing a surprisingly decent job here. But look at this throw from Lawrence. Watch as Lawrence right before he gets hit makes uh, th just throws a complete dime there where if that wasn't a perfect throw, that's still not a completion with the surprisingly good coverage of George Karloftis on that play. Uh, Kirk was able to make a good catch as well, but it was exactly where Lawrence wanted to put that football. And so for me, you know, the reality is it is kind of a thing that young quarterbacks sometimes struggle in their first playoff game or two. So because it is just it's a different animal. Teams throw a lot more stuff at you uh, in those big games because, you, you know, empty the playbook at that point. You have nothing to lose. And so because of that, sometimes young quarterbacks struggle a little bit in their first playoff game or two. To me, this is just kind of normal growing pains with Lawrence. And I fully expect him to be, you know, the play like he did from the second half of the Chargers game and on in future playoff games. That would be my guess. But yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.